shotgun, three man rush. Phillips sets, throws, ball's gonna be picked off. Cassius Fox got it, down the sideline we go. 35 30, Rivers chasing, 25 20, 15 10, 5 to the house. And that is Cassius Vaughn. How you doing? Cassius, how we doing? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm so glad we got a hold of you. Hey, man. Is everything all right? I want to make sure everything's all right with you first. Everything okay? Everything's good with me. Everything. I'm just glad I can call you and get in touch with you so we can we, so we can talk, man. You're one of my biggest biggest Twitter fans. Oh, that's right, man. We <laughs> we love you. Hey, first things first, before we get started, how's the leg feeling? Oh, uh, it's good. I'm I'm ahead of schedule with my foot. Um man, it was it was uh it was a it was a difficult injury to watch my team go out there and play, but you know, it's my leg is doing fine. I'm, I'm recovering well. We in the process of rehabbing in Denver, so you know the staff. The staff is just taking a whole bunch of care of me. We taking good care of my ankle, so I'll be back for camp and for the season in full, the full force, ready to go. That's great. That's that's amazing to hear, Cassius. Denver is starting a, a trend, getting undrafted free agent defensive backs. Now. <laughs> I want to. We're going to get to a couple points talking about the draft, but talk about your personal steps. I, you had two hundred and fifty some odd teams pass on you in the draft. How yeah. do you keep that mindset to keep going, knowing that you're just as good playing opposite a Hall of Famer in Champ Bailey, and you know you're good enough, and you've shown you you're good enough to play? How do you keep that mindset? I mean, you have to. You just have to stay humble at all times because I mean, this is playing in the NFL. It's a it's a blessing. It's a privilege. It's not anything that's just given to people. You have to earn that privilege, and you know whether whether you drafted or undrafted, you always have to stay humble and understand where you come from and, and what you're trying to get to because it's not how you start; it's how you finish. Because there's plenty of people that came in the league and wasn't drafted, but now you know their names and their significant players on teams. And I mean, like. For me, it was it was just a total the whole draft situation. It was a it was a total like uh, I guess a awakening a wake up call for myself just to be like, hey, you know, they passed on you. So you know, I always tell them, I always tell like my coaches and everybody around me like, you know, they had coaches, new coaches come in, the old coaches, and hey, when you get drafted, I say, coach, I was the first pick in the first pick in the free agent. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. Pick. So you know, uh, and this just how you have to figure out. You have to be confident, and you can't let it get. You can't. You know, you can't hold no grudges. But you, you have to. You have to go in with the mindset that you you're going to prove yourself. And that's that's just the biggest thing. And playing beside a champ, like you know, I I can honestly say I'm like one of few people that get to play. I play with two Hall of Famers, like. No question, Brian Dawkins and Champ Bay, and just being around those guys and learning from them and doing what they trying to do, what they do is just amazing. Just to learn from them and you know, parts of that game I try to take in and put in my own. And and they just like they're like teachers. They just keep on, just keep telling me this, keep telling they're all of us. And then like and we and and we're a young group. I mean, we we still a young group. We got some old, we got some older pieces, but we still a young group. And they they take us under their wing and. They take us on their wing when they just like they just they kind of just season us up to get ready to play because I honestly, you know, the the good things I did this year, you know, with all the all the prospect of me being me me being ready, not letting the lockout affect me, and not you know, wanting to be ready for the new organization, the new coaches, the new staff, everything. So you have to always be prepared to just understand where you come from and where you're trying to go. On. That's that's an excellent point, and uh, this is Robo here talking. My man, I got another question for you that deals with Champ Bailey and Dawkins and the veterans. I want to uh-huh. I want to know what do veterans and Hall of Famers such as Champ Bailey and Brian Dawkins what have they taught you about playing the hardest position in the NFL in quarterback cornerback? Is is being a professional, like being on your job, being accountable, being being honest. Like you have to when you playing back there, you got to always know what's going on around you. I mean, I think for a lot of young guys, I mean, regardless of where you get drafted coming in, you had you gotta have you gotta know what's going on because it's fast. It's faster than anything in college. So you gotta catch it and and they catch it and be right on point with them because you're getting put in this situation where hey look, 
this is this is not just a game anymore. This is this is your life you're playing with. You know, like this this is your job, and it, it's fun. It, it, we enjoy it, and they teach us it. But being a professional is is probably one of the biggest things they teach us. Like just being on time, being accountable. Like I said, and you know, no, and knowing what's going on. You know, when your coach is talking, and have a pencil in your hand and paper on your desk to write down what your coach is saying, so you can hey. This is this is what we talking about. This is what we focusing on today, and and they do a good job of it. They just, I mean, I personally, my my own personal being with Dawkins and Champ and even Joe Mays, I, I worked out with all of them this summer. It was it was a it was a blessing. It was probably one of the best things that could ever happen to me because it helped me grow. It helped me grow as a player. I don't think I would have been in the situation I am or even been in Denver if it wasn't for that type of you know, leadership that they brought to the table for me during the offseason and during the lockout. We're talking to Cassius Vaughn, number 41 in the programs of your Denver Broncos, number one in all of our hearts, <laughs> <laughs> and we are on chaotic radio here. And Cassius, now you, you talked a little bit about accountability, and you're going to go into your third NFL season with your third defensive coordinator. Now, Dennis Allen, one thing he harped on, to his defense was accountability and you guys were vastly changed for the better last season now in comes jack del rio have you been have you had any time to to talk with him yet or or speak with him and uh, if so how does this defense who is trying to get better and better and make that next step get there i thought i talked to him just spoke to him for a little bit i mean he's I mean, Coach Del Rio. I mean, just you just be around him. You can just feel the presence of a like an intense guy. You know, somebody that's gonna be. Hey, look, this make us accountable still. I mean, I think I honestly think our defense is gonna get better with Coach Del Rio. I think you know that the whole staff and everybody is just gonna. We just it's gonna step up a notch because we've been there. We know what it takes. You know, this is different when only like a few of the guys know what it takes. But we took. I think we, as a team, as a defense, we took giant steps to to get it right. And you know, everybody loves their feeling of being in the playoffs and playing playing for the playing for the championship. And because they're real, when I when I talked to him, he was he was a straight up guy. It's, you know, he, he, he pretty it's pretty cut and dry with him. You know, you you know you're gonna make plays or you're not. You know, and the best man is gonna play. And you know, and and we understand that. And I and I, I honestly think he's gonna. He's gonna make our defense better, and what we have going in, we're gonna. It's just we're just gonna evolve from where we are. We're not gonna take any steps back. I don't believe we're gonna take any steps back just because of the hunger of the defense and and what we're bringing to the table with the staff and, and even with the new players. We're probably gonna get in the draft and in free agency. No, that's a that's an excellent point. Um, this is Robo again. I just want to ask you for all those young players out there that are aspiring to get to the league, that are trying to better themselves, that are work, just busting their tails day in and day out for an ultimate goal. I would just love to know what would you like to tell those young players that you know kind of have maybe a story similar to yours, undrafted, and how to keep that mindset to continue through the NFL draft process and to eventually prevail and get to the league. What, what's you, your advice for them? You, you got to stay hungry at all times. You have to. You have to stay hungry. I mean, never get comfortable. I don't care if you're in the first round, second round, free agent. You got to stay hungry. Don't and. I always remember everybody in the league is talented. Everybody in the NFL is talented. So you have to work harder than them. You don't have to. Is ability is not just the only thing that you need to play in the NFL. You have to be smart. You have to be tough. And like I said, you have to have a work ethic that some people just won't have. You have to have it because if you don't, it 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 won't go anywhere. You have to have a work ethic at all times. So if the young guys that's coming in, stay hungry. Be 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 prepared for anything, and just and be accountable. Don't be that guy that just hey, I'm just here for the ride. Just be that guy that hey, you want to learn from. Be able to take criticism to the extreme and and learn from it. Cassius, you you are one of the players on this Broncos defense that, and going back to the Dennis Allen outlook, you you are hungry. Every time we hear your name, you're around the ball or you're in the end zone. <laughs> which is, is our, us Bronco fans love to hear. I know my parents love it especially. But one thing, you had a front row view 
of what was Tebow mania. And I don't want to go too much into Tebow mania, but what I want to ask you is you're talking about staying hungry. Tebow is one of the hungriest players in terms of the fan scene that, that we've seen. And now in comes this Jeremy Lin in the NBA. <laughs> just, just talk about the two players and, and their drive and what makes them so polarizing and so so much fun to watch. <laughs> it's funny, yeah, because I was just talking about Jeremy Lin earlier today in Tico. <laughs> Everyone you know, is. I mean, they they they're just extraordinary players. I mean, like I mean, Tim was Tim was the you know I, everybody knew Tim come from Florida. And Tebow mania been going on since Tim touched the campus of Florida. So, I mean, for, like Tim just has it. Like everybody knows, he has a he's a workaholic. He's a worker. I never seen anybody work as hard as him. Even coming in as my rookie year, after everybody thought we were so much in shape, this and that, this and that, Tim would Tim could come in there and bench and squat more than all of us and, and get that <laughs> much and, you know, give them much more than a lot of guys and, and the thing about it was he was he was hungry and I mean and it, it makes you want to step up. That's why when when he stepped into the into the starting role at quarterback I mean, I've been believing in Tim since since he left Florida, and I, and I, I love Tim, and, and I, I always been behind him. And even with Jeremy Lin, you know, he went through a tough time. You know, you see a story on ESPN, he went through a tough time. Hey, he went, he wasn't this, he wasn't there. He got cut here, he got cut there, and then he just took his took this approach. Hey, look, I'm gonna do it the way I want to do it. I'm gonna be aggressive. I'm gonna be this, and we see what happens. If it don't work. Then hey, I gave him my best, and that's all you can ask for because you can only control what you can control. And he went out there, you know. For everybody, probably doesn't even remember the first game he came in. He was looking kind of like, oh, who is this guy falling over the court? Just name turnovers, but he stepped it up, and now everybody's just crazy about it. And I, I appreciate, I appreciate anybody that goes out there and can overcome anything and, and can keep their mindset on what they're trying to do and not what people are saying about them. I mean, both of the players, they're great. They, you know, they're working harder every every day to get better. And, I mean, and one of the biggest things about them and, and what people love about them the most, their, their Christian faith, them believing in God and them believing in the Lord is that they're saving. It's, it's a beautiful thing to see athletes to even do that type of thing and put it and put it first in their life and not the lifestyle that we live in. And that's why I think, they're, they're just prospering so much because they put they put the right their priorities together, and I mean they they're great players. At the end of the day, they're gonna regardless football basketball they're gonna still be great people. At the end of the day, that's that's a great point. And Cash, it's the last question I have for you is I'm sure a lot of Denver fans want to know this. Not to mention. I for sure do, and <laughs> all I want to know is who is that right hand man for you in the locker room? Who's your go to guy? Is it your guy right next to you, or is it the people you go to battle with every single day? Who is it? This is what I want to know. I mean, the right hand man. What you mean? Like far as I'm doing what? I'm talking in the in the clubhouse, if you if you will, in the locker room. I want to know who's that guy that gets you juiced up, ready to play some football, that puts that passion in you, that makes you have that drive to succeed and compete. Who's that guy you go to in the locker room? <laughs> I mean, in the locker room, I can't I can't say nobody. I can't, <laughs> the I can't politician. Say nobody. I can, I can, if, you, if you say competing every day, and I want to be I want to be better, or just like him. I want to be better than Chen one day. I want to be just like him, but I know. Like me and me and, me and Sequan Thompson, we came in together and like we work out together. We push each other, push each other, push each other. I know he got injured early and I end up getting injured late, but we both gonna be back around about the same time. And we both just put in our mind, say, hey, look, we gonna we gonna come back and we gonna we gonna compete every day. You know, we're gonna make it, we're gonna make it hard to get rid of me and him, and you know, and and we just it's a mutual thing between me and him because we want to be we want to be great. You know, and and like we both, I think I think more the motivation comes with that. We just want to be good players. You know, like you don't never want to disappoint. You know, the biggest thing is like like everybody in the locker room is like your right hand man. You know, because like when I go on the field or I'm covering somebody, you tell me I got this man, man to man, and every, like everybody depends on that. Like. I don't want to let nobody on that D line, my linebackers, my safety, my coach, anybody down. Not not Denver country, not nobody. Anybody that wear a Denver Bronco hat, T shirt, I don't want to let them down because 
I know they depend on because I, I can understand from being from the fan perspective. When I was injured watching the games, I can be play a first playoff game. I'm in my house sweating like I'm playing in the game because I'm that <laughs> nervous because I know how they feeling, and it, it, it's that drive and it's that motivation that keeps everybody going. And, and personally, myself, you know, my family is more of my it factor. But just I, I believe that. When that time rolls around, we playing football again. Those guys in that locker room, I never want to let them down. So I never went back on the tackle or anything for them because I know every inch of that field counts and matters to everybody on that team. So, I mean, I I yeah. love my whole squad. Cassius, that last was th- well said. That's <laughs> all I have to say. Great job. <laughs> last 30 seconds, uh, just a couple rapid questions for you. One-word answers. What's more fun to watch, Linsanity or Tebow Mania? <laughs> Tebow Mania. That's right. <laughs> and then my my final question before we let you go: How many times are we going to see Cassius Vaughn in the Denver Broncos end zone? Oh man, <laughs> we, I hope a lot. I hope yeah. a lot. I want to surprise a lot of people. I won't put a number on it, but I, I'm just I'm, I have high goals for myself this year. So. All hey, right. We, we're hoping we'll be seeing Cases in the end zone a lot this year. That's right, Cassius Vaughn, cornerback for the Denver Broncos. Cassius, always great to talk to you. Thank you so much for. Uh, taking the time out and getting your phone all squared away. And uh, I hope we can uh, talk with you, you know, a couple weeks down the line and, you know, see how uh, that defense is going during OTAs. Hey, anytime, anytime. I like thank y'all for just having me on the show. All the fans that are listening. Hey, I love y'all and just I thank you a lot. All right, Cassius Vaughn, Denver Broncos quarterback.